I'm Dr. Purnima Luthra, and I'm an associate professor here at the Copenhagen Business School. Inclusion and belonging are paramount to employees feeling that they can thrive, that they feel that they belong within the workplace. And this is one of the most important things when we think about organizations that want to ensure that the talent is able to be just satisfied with their job, that they're enjoying the work that they're doing, that they enjoy being in that space. And so there is a benefit to the organization internally with creating a culture where everyone is able to bring their unique selves, where everyone is to, able to be who they want to be, but also that on the financial side, it actually leads to some really nice business outcomes for the organization. When we talk about inclusion in the workplace, we're really referring to an environment or a culture where people who bring different perspectives, backgrounds, feel that they can bring their unique selves and feel that they belong in the organization. Now here's the key. Inclusion isn't felt in a corporate strategy about diversity, equity and inclusion. It isn't felt in a roadmap either. And so inclusion is felt in our day-to-day -day interactions with each other, by the coffee machine, at lunch and during meetings. And this is where allyship comes in. For us to truly feel included in an organization, these experiences and interactions that we have with each other need to be inclusive. Allyship is a lifelong process of building supporting relationships with people from underrepresented, marginalized and discriminated groups, all with the intention of advancing inclusion. So biases are inherent in all of us, right? They are simply how our brain functions. And our brain receives a vast amount of information every single second. And so we use mental shortcuts to help us make sense of this. Otherwise, quite frankly, we wouldn't actually be able to function in the world. And so there is a role for biases indeed. The challenge for us though, is that these biases affect how we interact with others, the language that we use, but also the decisions that we make. And so one of the most important things for addressing bias and blocking bias is really to slow down our thinking. And when we slow down some of these decision-making processes, we're then able to catch ourselves and block the biases and ensure that those biases don't have an impact on what we're saying to someone else, how we're interacting with others, and the decisions that we're making. So really, it, when we talk about blocking bias, it begins with awareness, being aware of our own biases and the biases around us, and then making sure that we're slowing down our decision-making so that we're able to block those biases.